getting that time of year. I had to put the slightly bigger coat on anyway. But Uber and Lyft are scared right now. Uber and Lyft for the first time probably in their history is afraid because the amount of drivers taking legal cash rides and just cash rides under the table is grown dramatically. I would say probably one in three one in, I would probably say one in three Uber and Lyft drivers either does under the table cash rides or they're they are actually a private driver legally. Meaning limousine, taxi, deliveries, they got their LLC. But they're 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 afraid. And they can't they can't hire enough new drivers to offset that difference in money. Because typically, I would say new drivers are mostly part-time. I would say most of the new drivers are part-time. And they really don't work more than maybe like three hours, three, four hours a day. Because they got other jobs, they got other responsibilities. So Uber, I think particularly Uber is more worried than Lyft is. Because I, I want to say with the increased amount of shared rides that they've been putting out. I would say it feels like 50%. Hit me in the comments if you think I'm wrong. I think 50% of the offers we're getting lately are crappy shared rides. Really crappy ones. And nobody wants to do them anymore. The passengers don't like being overcharged for surge just to find out the driver's not getting a cut of that. Their excuses with insurance prices increasing is why they gotta charge us more is just straight up false because their company business model should not be charging the driver for insurance. You're supposed to be getting that cut from the passengers. So why is the driver paying out of his cut? Because insurance rates are going up. That makes no sense. Make this make sense. It makes absolutely no sense that a driver should have to suffer a portion of his cut of the fare because of fictitious fees, fares, fictitious fees, I would say, that they just throw in and make up, and then these lies and claims that, which I do believe insurance went up, but why are you passing that on to the drivers? And then I'm hearing in uh, certain states, they're actually lowering, legally trying to get states to lower the minimum per minute per mile because gas went down. I was actually blown away when I saw that because gas went down. You're going to overcharge, you're undercharge or underpay drivers a percentage what happens when the gas goes back up you think they're going to raise their rates to compete with the difference no they're not scam after scam after scam and uber is the granddaddy of the scams because let's just keep it real lyft is just a copycat I had hopes and dreams back in the day when Lyft came out and they were popping up all these hubs. I think I was living at Waterbury at the time and Lyft had a brand new hub station and for some reason I was like, yo, let me go check out this hub station and talk to the kid that works there. And it was a young guy and uh, I think it's right, right out of 
college. They weren't paying these people a lot, but the fact that they were just chilling in a mall, because they were like putting them in malls. That's for what happened to be in Waterbury Mall at the time. And I should have known it wasn't going to last because and it was a little kiosk. It wasn't even like a store or anything. It was literally a little kiosk and they were just trying to let me get out of this direct sunlight so you guys can bad enough I'm dark skin now I'm in the light it's causing a glare yeah it's a little bit better so when I started looking at this yeah I was like okay let me go check this kiosk out and I talked to the kid and Lyft at the time was seeming like they were going in a more positive direction like as far as the driver culture I don't know what it was they were like doing a lot where they were actually talking to the drivers but this was like 2018 I want to say 2018 2019 somewhere around there I thought Lyft was going to be different Lyft is just a small copycat and I think the only reason the only reason I would say some drivers are happy with Lyft over Uber is mainly because of that area filter, which is a good feature for free. Uber, I think, gives that to you, but you got to go through a lot of bells and whistles and probably be the top tier driver just to get it. I believe they have it. I've never hit it the level to even know if Uber offers a filter. Hit me in the comments if they do. I believe Uber offers a filter if you hit a certain tier. But that's a plus with Lyft. And the only other plus would be in your in certain areas, even in Connecticut, I notice you'll get more Lyft rides than Uber. It's not often, but it does happen. Like I would not go to if you love if you love Uber. I would stay closer to New York City, but be warned, you will have to go to New York City if you're in these areas at some point. The, the app's just going to keep pulling you that way, unless you just turn the app off when it starts pulling you that way, or you just go back to Lyft. I don't know what you're going to do, but Danbury, you will be busy on Uber. I very rarely got a Lyft. I want to say in Danbury, Norwalk, Stanford, Westport, anywhere up up 95, Bridgeport, Bridgeport, you got to get both. You will get a lot of Uber and Lyft. Um, Waterbury, I want to say Waterbury, I used to get more Lyft, but I want to say it's probably about 50-50 too. Probably about 50-50 for Waterbury. New Haven, you're going to get more Uber. Yeah, I would say more Uber. Uh, New Britain, it's like 50, 50. No, it's more Uber. So in most places, it is going to be more Uber. But there's certain places, and you would know in your state more than I would, where there's more Lyft than Uber. But and that and the area filter might be the only reason why you might go with uh, I'm trying to think what this car doing. It came close to my car. That's the only reason why I would think you could you would go with Lyft over Uber. The pay wise, to me it feels like a difference. To me it feels like Lyft pays me slightly more per ride when it's we're not including surge we're just talking about basic basic rides which I know a lot of you like why are you even driving when there's no surge being paid but a basic lift ride I feel like they pay me slightly more than Uber at times and I just can't stand the shared rides guys I can't I can't deal with it anymore it's starting to affect my mental health, if that makes sense. 
you know. And I'm gearing up to go private, so I did lock down a under the table ride because I want to be ready. When I go live and I go ready, I want to have all the payment platforms. I mean, everything. A lady even told me to get Chime. She even told me to get Chime because she would pay me direct to Chime if I had Chime. So I'm going to get everything. I want to get Chime, Cash App, uh, Venmo. I heard PayPal is turning into something else. I, I, it could be a rumor, but I heard PayPal is turning into possibly another company. But PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. I'm probably gonna get Chime. I'm probably gonna do Square because Square gives you allows some places to have the ability to just tap and pay. Literally just tap, give them a receipt if they want it. Uh yeah, Square Stripe. Stripe, I heard, is gonna have some ways to I think probably if you download the app. I think they'll probably give you ways to take payments directly through Stripe. That's a plus. Um, yeah, I just don't... I'm tired of playing the game with Uber. And I talked to my landlord. Not my, not my landlord. I'm sorry. My neighbor. I talked to my neighbor. Uh, Puerto Rican guy. Uh, free Trump supporters. He voted for Trump. You know, just thought I'd throw that out there. And uh, he, me and him were just talking about the state of rideshare. We weren't talking about Trump. We were talking about the state of rideshare. And he said basically something a, a commenter said in one of my videos was like, basically don't bite the hand that feeds you. Like basically he's like, oh, you got to be careful. I was like, what do you mean, be careful? Oh, man, Uber's going to deactivate you. I'm like, so what? So what? I didn't say it to him that way, but so what? I said to him jokingly, like, they pay so little. Because I'm not black or XL, they pay so little on Uber X. So what? I still got my private under the table. I got my lift, and I'm getting my license. I'm actually going into 2025 100% private driver legal. He was actually taken back by that. He didn't think that, I don't know, I don't want to say it's a culture thing, but I think he thinks that because I'm a black man that I wouldn't be trying to go 100% legal. And he was taken back by that. And he was like, oh, okay. And I was like, I still got lift. If one of them deactivate me, I'm not going to do something crazy where I'm going to get deactivated on both platforms. You got to damn near probably sexually harass somebody to get kicked off both platforms, which I'm not going to do. So I'm never going to be kicked off both platforms at the same time. It's, I think it's probably almost impossible for that to happen. You know, uh, unless I did something really wrong on my part, which I'm not trying to do. So if I get deactivated on Uber, so what? I still have Lyft, so I'll be able to take customers on the Lyft side and steal their customers. So what? I could literally, if I really was in a jam, I could go back to the group homes uh, I'm hearing even the schools are desperate to hire people I'm talking about desperate the Waterbury school system is so desperate to hire people that even at my age they would hire me I, I truly believe that even at my age I probably would get hired right away like like that you know and then my CPR training and all that, that's going to be extra. But I decided to bring that into my own business, get the bloodborne pathogen stuff, and make that a part of my career.
courier transportation business. Now I can do medical deliveries. I do medical deliveries all day long. I'm just not going to New York City. But I will do medical deliveries in Connecticut all day long as long as the pay is paying me more than Uber and Lyft, and it will. You know, I'm just waiting till I get my LLC set up before I start applying. But a lot of these companies, they do start slowing down in January. It's the only thing that bothers me, like January, February. So what I'm probably going to do is still sign up for them, even if they don't have any work. Because it works right now, really. I'm even thinking about signing up for one right now and see if they would sign me up without an LLC because the big money's right now, right before Christmas, right after Christmas. I would say probably the second week of January, things are going to start slowing down. That's, that's another thing we got to worry about, guys. What's going to happen when things start slowing down again Going into next year, I, I I remember last year, guys. It was bad. I I wouldn't have survived if I didn't do under the table rides. I'll be honest, and I wasn't talking about it because I didn't want to disappoint other YouTubers like the Rideshare Professor, who I know are totally against doing the cash rides under the table. But when I started watching um Mike drop BBQ he made me feel better about it he was like do you get in a lot of accidents he was like I don't get in a lot of accidents I was like thinking the same thing he was thinking and he was like there's nothing wrong with you occasionally taking that cash ride you know on your own insurance if you know how to drive and I was like yeah still taking a risk but I am going to do it the legal way but a lot of drivers aren't, and they're just fed up. They're just fed up. And passengers are getting fed up because they don't even care if they're cash rides. I will say this. By being a private driver, you're going to get better clients, I believe. Higher-end clients because you'll have a license. You'll have, you'll make more money. Because you'll be able to register, like, these medical delivery stuff, possibly even medical transportation, when you have the right licenses. That's the only thing that's holding me back, guys. That's the only the only thing holding me back from making three to $500 a day is getting these other licenses. Uber and Lyft ain't in it, guys. Ain't it, ain't it anymore, guys. Uber and Lyft is no longer the side hustle for 2025. It's dead 2024 in the eyes of most drivers. And if you're with me, please comment. Let me know you agree. We got to find other things to do. And I could, the beauty about having an LLC, you could do it under the same umbrella. It doesn't have to be. I did things wrong. I set up my holding company out of state. And for a transportation company, you have to be transparent. It should be your state because the money is in your state. The money you're receiving is your, in your state. This can't be that kind of company. So this is not an anonymity company that you're going to hide yourself. This is going to be a transparent, operational LLC to do all your side hustles. That's the thing. It doesn't have to be, I'm just going to take the taxi and delivery any ICS code. But that's not all this company is going to be. I'm going to be doing courier, medical. <coughs> I know for sure medical deliveries. Not so sure about medical rides. That might be a more complicated license that might take me more time to get but 
the hardest part about this whole process will be insurance. But here's what bothers me about that. If you're a company owner or fleet owner, limousine owner, why do you got to pay insurance twice? Uber's charging you for the most expensive commercial insurance in the world as far as Uber's concerned. We know why they're doing that because they're obviously making a cut from that. But we're getting charged twice. If you're already a contract driver that has commercial insurance, I mean, you have all the insurance you need. Why do you got to pay Uber insurance? Shouldn't you be exempt because you have your own commercial insurance? You have full coverage commercial insurance to cover every aspect of your business, why is Uber charging you insurance again? Are we? And why is there no hybrid insurance companies that offer a combination of commercial and rideshare coverage that's affordable? We don't have a, like a hybrid insurance model in Connecticut. They have them in other states. We don't have one here. I think I could have sworn one was called Vroom or something like that. I could be thinking about one of these new rideshare companies, but the rideshare professor was talking about uh, no, the rideshare guy, the rideshare guy network, show me the money club, they were talking to a guy that had a hybrid insurance model that covered everything you need to legally do ride share even under your own fleet or LLC. And then you just pay additional, I'm assuming monthly fee per driver that you add. We don't have nothing like that. Insurance companies, I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. You need to come up with something like this. And you need to have a referral program. You need to have a referral program in place if you're an insurance company and you want to do some type of hybrid ride share insurance that's affordable for drivers. I will be your biggest promoter here in Connecticut. I'm actually thinking about going to a couple insurance companies and telling them that. Like, hey, look, if you could even give me some affordable commercial insurance I would promote your company if you have a referral program see what happens you never know you never know but thank you guys for listening to me rant it is going to be a slow week um, because of the holiday week it is what it is but I'm not worried about this week I'm worried about January when things really get slow I want to have Everything I need to make as much money as I need going into this new year. And I know we got some time. I know we got like two months. You know, well, a little less than two months. Sorry, a lot less than two months. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, the year is over. I'm already looking towards the future, and. I still don't, I don't want you guys to think just because I'm saying I'm going private, I'm still not going to be a Uber or Lyft driver. How do you think I'm getting my customers? I'm just going to do it a lot less, a whole lot less. I might just narrow it down to weekends at that point because, like I said, I already got a couple cash rides in the queue now. The only difference is I'm just switching them to my LLC, you know, one, once I set it up, the money's just going from one account in my name to the LLC. It's the only difference. And the difference is I'm showing you the guys the steps to set up your LLC a certain way to maximize your business and corporate credit to get more than you would if you did it another way, which the business name plays a big part of that.
don't put rides, transportation in the name. And I don't know why Connecticut is telling people they got to have a name that represents what they do. No, you don't. You can have a neutral name for your business. And you want a neutral name because this is not just taxi and delivery. You're going to be doing, you can put your babysit money in here, your dog walking money in this LLC. You know, they're not going to see the, the NAICS code. They're just going to see your business name. So all your hustle money can go in this account. All your gig stuff. If you're doing shopping apps, put that money in this. You know, whatever side hustles you're doing, you should have it go to that LLC and then cut a check to yourself as an employee, which is I'm going to do because I want to have it where I actually get an income tax check just like normal employee. I'm going to pay all the Connecticut. Connecticut's ridiculous because you could tell them you're, you own a company, but they still want you to pay everything that an employee needs regardless. So that's, uh, I forgot what Connecticut is charging some kind of extra fee put aside for PTO or something like that. So even though I'm never gonna use that, I gotta still gotta put that aside because I'm gonna be a employee of my own company on the books. So I'm thinking about going with the company Gusto. I think they're affordable. Um, what company did I try? I tried Paychex, I didn't like it. Uh, people told me ADP got better, but it's a little expensive. So I hear Gusto is probably the more affordable one. So I'm probably gonna do that one. Um, probably like 40, 50 bucks a month. You know, it's not gonna be nothing crazy. And I'm the only employee as of right now. But the, the, another reason why I want to go on payroll, you have the ability to, I think through Gusto, cut 1099s and W-2s for future employees. Somebody try to call me, if that makes sense. So that's another thing we're going to be talking about, another thing we're going to be doing. I just don't want to rely on Uber and Lyft anymore. I'm just done. You know? And like I said, I've never... I don't know why my neighbor said, don't bite the hand to feed you, basically. He didn't say it that way, but... He was worried because he has nothing else going. Well, he does have other things going. I shouldn't say that. He's a mechanic. But I think he relies too much on Uber and Lyft. Like, he relies on Uber and Lyft as his livelihood. So, he relies on that money for, you know, like it's his only source of income. You know, if I was him, I'd go in harder, advertise and being a mechanic, he would make more money. You know, but it's none of my business. Um, you know, I think he thinks it's going to be a great year because his candidate won. I don't rely on any president. I got to make my own economy. I've never relied on who's going to be president to dictate how much money I'm going to get that year. You know, I get it. Your local politicians might be more important. You know, your governors, your, you know, stuff like that. But no, it doesn't matter who's president. We got to get this money. So if you're with me, if you understand where I'm coming from, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It does help me support putting out more videos. Um, I would appreciate if you support me. Check the links below. Subscribe. Click that bell icon. Give me the thumbs up. Anything you can do to support that doesn't require any money. You don't have to spend any money. And I even got a free uh, platform that I'm offering at WilliamBlanding.com that I don't even charge you guys anything. It's free video content 
talking about entrepreneurship and how to get this money. But I really like this process because I'm going to be showing you guys the licenses, the setup, and I enjoy talking about it. You can see the passion in my voice. I enjoy, I don't even want to let the video go because I enjoy talking about content creation, business development, and I like complaining about Uber and Lyft because I know it's not the end of the world. I know there's money to be made in transportation off these platforms. So I'm gonna let you guys go. I'm done. That was the end of my rant. Thank you again. Subscribe, like, comment, and again, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.